Yo, what's up chefs? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to kill every single enemy in the goblin caves. Starting off with the easiest mobs on the map, all the way to the hardest boss on the map, the Cyclops. There's going to be chapters for the video, so if you want to skip around to a certain enemy, feel free. Let's hop into it. Starting off with what I believe to be the easiest mob on the map, which is the giant bat, usually hanging from the ceiling. Once aggro, they will slowly fly towards you, and upon getting close enough, will always start out with a scream that applies a confusion effect that is pretty harmless. You can usually kill them during this scream. Their only other attack is a forward dash, which can easily be dodged by sidestepping either left or right. Up next, we have the Death Skull, another quite easy mob. Once aggroed, they will slowly fly towards the player, and upon getting close enough, their eyes will turn yellow, indicating they're about to dash forward, which is their only attack and can be easily dodged by sidestepping either left or right. After each dash, you are safe to get at least 1-2 to two hits in, depending on your attack speed. Next up is the Spider Mummies, usually accompanied by a spider pot. The spiders can be killed by backpedaling and attacking them at the same time. It's important to note though that the pot will continue spawning spiders, so the best strategy is to jump on top of the pot, which keeps you out of reach of the spiders, break the pot, and then kill the remaining spiders. Next is a pretty annoying enemy, the giant mosquito. Once aggroed, they will slowly fly towards the player, and upon getting close enough, will release a barrage of poisonous projectiles which apply a damage over time effect. The easiest way to kill them is to run towards them and kill them before they get their first volley off. But if that's not possible, then you can jump over the poison and then attack, or attack them from the opposite side that the poison is starting on. Moving on, we have the Death Beetle. Once aggroed, they will fly towards the player and upon getting close enough, spit out a projectile which applies a slow that can stack up to three times. This projectile can be baited out by getting close and then easily dodged by sidestepping either left or right. If you ever get three stacks of the slow though, you will basically not be able to move. Our first standing melee mob is going to be the Mummy. Most melee mobs are dealt with by baiting out an attack from them and then taking your turn to attack afterwards. The mummies are usually hidden underground and will spawn once you are close enough. They are extremely slow and have two attacks. One that's triggered when you are very close, which is an arm swing that is easily dodged by turning 90 degrees to the right and then strafing away with your D key. And the other is a forward lunge, which can be dodged in the same way but it's more effective to dodge this attack by either sidestepping to the left or the right. In between their attacks, you are safe to get multiple attacks in. Up next is the Goblin Axeman. You'll notice a pattern soon enough, but similarly to the Mummy, these are easily dealt with by baiting an attack from them and then taking your turn afterwards. They have two attacks. One is a singular overhead swing, and the other is a two-part combo, where they slash once on each side. Both attacks are easily dodged by baiting out the attack by effectively chest bumping the mob and then turning 90 degrees to the right and strafing away with your Diki. Next is the Skeleton Guardsman. Same pattern as before, these are easily dealt with by chest bumping the mob to bait an attack and then taking your turn. They only have one attack, which is a downward slash, which is easily dodged by turning 90 degrees to the right and strafing away with your DP. You have plenty of time between attacks for this mob. Next up, we have the Skeleton Footman. This mob is almost identical to the Skeleton Guardsman. This mob has two attacks though. Same downward slash as the Guardsman, and also a downwards horizontal slash that has a slight forward lunge attached to it. Both of these attacks are easily dodged by baiting the mount, and then turning 90 degrees to the left or right, and then strafing away with the appropriate key. Moving on, we have the Goblin Swordsman. 
Same pattern as before, this mob is easily dealt with by baiting its attacks and then taking your turn. It has two attacks. One is a downward slash and the other is a horizontal slash. Both of these attacks are easily dodged by baiting them out and then turning 90 degrees to the left or right and strafing away with the appropriate key. Next up is our first traditional ranged mob, the Goblin Archer. Once aggroed, the mob will approach the player and upon getting close enough, begin to fire an arrow. This attack is easily dodged by sidestepping either left or right. In between their shots, you will have time to land one to two attacks of your own, depending on your attack speed, before you should take a few steps back and then prepare to sidestep their next arrow. Next is a somewhat annoying ranged mob for newer players, the Goblin Bola Slinger. This mob is dealt with similarly to the Archer by sidestepping the projectile by strafing either left or right, except the speed at which they throw their bola seems to be determined by how close the player is to them. The closer you are, the faster they throw it, and vice versa. So after you take your turn to attack, make sure you take a few steps back and start strafing left or right early. Next, we have the Goblin Mage. This mob is dealt with similarly to the Archer by waiting for them to start their projectile and then strafing either left or right. However, you can also get close to them and just circle around to the right and attack them the whole time since the projectile is coming from their opposite hand. Additionally, after three to four projectiles, they will start a long animation that busts themselves and nearby goblins and are easily killed during this animation. Next is the Skeleton Swordsman, equipped with a Zweihander. This mob has two attacks. One is a singular horizontal slash that always starts on their left side, so you're right if you're looking at them. And the other is a two-part horizontal slash attack, which always starts on their right side, your left, and then comes back the other way. Both attacks can be dodged by baiting it out and then strafing away. Or the more effective method is to crouch and look directly down to dodge. You must be looking directly down or you will get headshot. You can also block the first attack of the two-part combo to break the combo. Moving on, we have the Skeleton Spearman. This mob has three attacks. The first is a forward stab, easily dodged by sidestepping either left or right. The second is a vertical downward slash, easily dodged by turning 90 degrees in either direction and strafing away. And the third is a horizontal slash, which is pretty fast and harder to dodge than the previous two. But you can still use the strafing method if you bait the attack first. My strategy for this mob is to take my time in baiting out each attack before taking my turn, since you don't know when they might decide to use the horizontal slash. Now we have the giant spider. This mob has two attacks, a very short range melee attack that is extremely easy to dodge by strafing away, and the other is a ranged attack which is actually very difficult to dodge. Thankfully the ranged attack does very little damage, but it does apply a debuff that prevents you from attacking. The easiest way to deal with this mob is to get close and then just backpedal while attacking the whole time and they typically won't even try to attack you. Following that, we have the Skeleton Mage, a somewhat difficult enemy for new players. They only have one attack, which is a projectile fireball that leaves fire on the ground for a brief period and does a lot of damage. They will also sometimes shield themselves or a nearby mob, making them immune to damage for a short period of time. The easiest way to deal with this mob is to put a wall in between you and the enemy, and they will just throw their fireball into the wall. The more effective method, however, is to just be a few feet away from them, and this allows you to easily strafe left or right and dodge the projectile. This is the Warlock mob, added to the game two patches ago roughly, and is the easiest mob in the game currently.
Up next is the Skeleton Axeman, aka Thanos. Probably the hardest regular mob in the game in my opinion. They have two attacks, a lunging vertical downward slash, which is rather easily dodged by strafing away and sidestepping either left or right at the same time. The second attack, however, is quite difficult because it comes out really fast and doesn't give you much time to dodge. So, the best strategy for dealing with them is getting close to bait their attack and then immediately beginning to strafe away in case it is the horizontal slash. And if you do it that way, you won't get hit and then you can take your turn to attack once or twice and repeat the process. Do not get greedy going for multiple hits on this mob or you will be punished. Now we have our first mini boss, the giant centipede. This enemy is actually a lot easier to kill than most people realize once you know the proper strategy. It has two attacks, a forwards lunging bite which can be dodged by sidestepping either left or right and a ranged attack that shoots three poisonous projectiles in which the poison can stack up to three times. This attack can be dodged by being relatively close to the mob and then crouching and looking directly down. After it takes a considerable amount of damage, it will also occasionally start to slither away and drop poison puddles on the ground. Make sure to not walk in these as it will stack up the poison. However, the easiest method to kill this enemy is to just get really close to it and then circle to the right around it the whole time. This will prevent you from ever getting hit by any of its melee attacks and 99% of the time that it uses its projectiles as well. Next up is the only other mini boss on the map, the Skeleton Champion, which can spawn sometimes directly above the Cyclops room. This is the hardest non-boss enemy on the map, and if you are close enough, will always use a 3 attack pattern, where the first two attacks get changed, but the third attack is always the same long reach forward stab. The way to properly kill this mob is to bait out the combo and stay close enough that he doesn't stop the combo but obviously far enough away to not get hit. And then on the third attack, just sidestep to the left or right, and then take your turn to attack. The easiest way to deal with this mob though is to find a spot to cheese him that I showcase, and it becomes pretty trivial. Now we have the first of two bosses, the Cave Troll, which is definitely the easier of the two. You want to start out the fight by running directly at his right hand, so your left if you're looking at him. However, before I roll the footage, I'm going to explain the strategy a little bit. Essentially, while there are two methods to killing this boss, this is definitely the easiest and safest way to learn, and it involves you circling around him to the left pretty much the whole fight. If you do this, then he only has two basic attacks you need to worry about, and then every three to four basic attacks, he will pick up his hammer with both hands above his head and do a big smash, which does an insane amount of damage in a large area around where he smashes the hammer. To avoid this, you just run away, and then once he finishes, you run back at him towards his right hand and repeat the process. The only other mechanic to look out for is his scream, which I'll touch on in just a moment, for now, let's watch some of the process. That's one basic attack. And that's the second. There is the two-handed overhead club smash. And from here, you can literally just rinse and repeat this entire process over and over until the boss is dead.
and you actually never have to encounter the scream mechanic because the only time he does it is when you are too far away from him and out of his melee range. If you ever do encounter the scream though, there are two ways to deal with it. One is to stay at a medium range and let it hit you, which it only applies a slow, stand still and turn 90 degrees to the left or right, then watch the debuff timer above your health bar and wait for it to get to the bottom right corner. Once it does, immediately start strafing directly away from the boss. Do not move before the debuff timer gets to the bottom right corner, otherwise he will do a different type of charging attack, which is so hard to dodge that I'm not even going to try to explain it, and rather just give you the tools to make sure it never happens to you. The other way to deal with the scream is to just run directly at his right hand, and you should dodge the scream because it's a conal attack and as long as you're close to him, he will just start doing his regular basic attacks once again. Now you can see the full fight in action. It's worth noting that some classes have a much easier time killing this boss than others, such as the Warlock, Bard, and Rogue, whereas trying to do it as a Cleric isn't really hard, it's just going to take much longer. As a Bard, every time he does his horizontal basic attack, you're able to get two Rapier Swings in on his hand, and every time he does his overhead basic attack, you're able to get two headshots in, which makes that the per preferred attack for him to do since it speeds up the fight. The final thing to note, and this is actually really important, is when he does his horizontal attack, you need to wait until his hand comes back down to his side to approach him and attack. If you move in too quickly, you will turn it into a combo and follow it up with more attacks that are devastating and quite difficult to dodge. That's all of the mechanics you need to know for this method of fighting the troll, so I'm just going to go ahead and let the rest of the fight play out, and I'll catch you guys whenever we get to the next boss. Yoink! Up next, we have the hardest enemy in the Goblin Caves, the Cyclops. The strategy for this boss involves you circling right pretty much the whole fight, which will limit him to three basic attacks. The first is an overhead club smash, which is easy to dodge by continuing to just circle right. The next is a horizontal hand attack, which you can still dodge by circling right but you'll need to back up a little bit, and if you're in a pinch, you can combine jumping, moving right, and backing up all together to dodge it. The third is another vertical club attack that goes from low to high, which can also be dodged by just moving to the right. However, since it starts on your right side, you want to make sure you aren't too close to him or you will probably get hit. Same as the last attack though, if you are in a pinch, you can combine moving backwards and to the right with a properly timed jump to dodge it as well. In addition to those basic attacks, he has three special attacks. One is a ground stomp, which will instantly kill you if you are too close to him, and will apply a slow a little bit further out, and will do nothing if you are far enough away. The next is a charging three-part combo attack, which looks very menacing, but is actually very easy. All you have to do is stand still and jump the first two attacks, and then crouch the third. You can actually keep attacking the boss during that whole attack. The final special attack is a horizontal club drag 
that does damage if you're hit, but also sprays dirt, which blinds you if you are not far enough to the right of him. For this, you just back away and try to move to the right as much as possible to avoid the blind, but even if you get hit with the blind like I do during the fight, it's not that bad. He only has one other mechanic throughout the fight, which is about to happen, called the rockfall phase. He will do this twice throughout the fight in normals, the first time is roughly at around 66% health left, and the second time seems like it's closer to 20% health remaining, give or take. This phase is essentially just a DPS check, as he continuously smashes the ground causing rocks to fall from the ceiling, which do AoE damage, which can be avoided by a properly timed jump, but it has a very, very narrow timing window for you to not take damage while jumping, which is 1 second after the first smash, then 0.5 seconds after the next 3 smashes, and then the cycle repeats. So it's pretty hard to master this part and will take some practice. For this reason, it's recommended to have a good amount of consumables when attempting this boss. To, re to reiterate that cleanly, once the phase starts, he will smash the ground four times in a row and then repeat the process. For the first smash, the timing window to jump is roughly one second after the smash, and for the next three smashes, it's roughly 0.5 seconds after each smash, and then the process repeats. Hopefully you got that, because now you get to see it in action. It seems like they stealthily made this phase a little easier in one of the recent patches, so I was able to finish it before he started to repeat the process. Anyways though, it'll happen once more towards the end of the fight. At this point, I've given you all the mechanics you will encounter with this strategy for the boss, so I'm gonna let the rest of the fight play out from here. You can have all the loot. I was just getting this footage for a YouTube video. This random fighter showed up who I assume is either new or just doesn't know the Cyclops because he seemed really timid and wasn't jumping during the rockfall phase. But either way it goes, I gave him all the loot and just for those that don't know, once you kill the boss it unlocks this extra door which is how you get downstairs to the marvelous chest and the gold pile. Finally, we've got the secret boss of the Goblin Caves, which is the Spike Trap. There are two ways to deal with this boss. One is to throw a torch on it, which will proc the spikes, and then as soon as they recede, begin to run over it and jump as you're about halfway across. The timing on this is a bit tricky and will take some practice. The other way is to tiptoe over the trap, which will proc the spikes, and then use the same method of running over it and jumping at about halfway. At this point, I've covered all of the mobs, mini bosses, and bosses within the Goblin Caves, so hopefully now I'm seeing less than 75% of my lobby dying to mobs within the first two minutes of every match. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and were able to learn something new, and I really appreciate the support on my previous two videos, Beginner Guide Episode 1 and Episode 2. If you learned something new from this video yourself and have a spare moment, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. 
It means a lot, and it helps me on my path to creating more Dark and Darker content in the future. And last but not least, take it easy, chefs.